What is going on everyone, my name is Kodamor and welcome back to Electronics episode 23. In this episode we will be using relays and capacitors to design an oscillating circuit which we can connect to a speaker to make sound or an LED to make it blink. By an oscillating circuit, I mean a circuit that is able to automatically switch between an on state and an off state. Essentially think of a blinking light, that's what we're going to be creating today. So we'll create a device that has an output that is off for a certain amount of time, turns on for a certain amount of time, off again, on again, off again. Now there are countless ways to create an oscillating circuit of course, but in my opinion the absolute simplest form of an oscillating circuit that can be created is a relay oscillator. Now of course because it is so simple it is not the best oscillator at all and in fact it's very very unpredictable and unstable. But that's okay, because in the next tutorial we are going to get into integrated circuits and we are going to make an even better oscillator. And in fact, our 8-bit computer is going to need an oscillating circuit, so we should probably learn about them. Now I am going to warn you that this relay oscillating circuit does have a possibility of damaging a relay. Now if you use a high enough capacitance value, your relay should be able to handle it. But I would just be very careful, follow the schematic that we're going to create very carefully, and don't connect the power until you're completely done putting everything together on the breadboard. But hey, if you do break a relay, that's okay because failing means you are learning. Anyways, let's go ahead and design this relay oscillator. Of course, I have a relay right here. This is a double pole, double throw relay, which we will be using. And I'm actually going to begin by drawing a battery in here, of course, right next to this. Here's the positive terminal of the battery. And we're just going to hook that right on up to one of the terminals of the electromagnet of the relay. And we'll hook up the negative terminal to one of the terminals of the actual switching part of the relay. And it is important that we connect it to one of the terminals that are defaultly connected together here. So when the electromagnet is not being powered, these two terminals are being connected together. But when we do power the electromagnet, then these two terminals are gonna get powered together. So because these two terminals are connected together when the relay is not being powered, we're actually gonna hook up this other terminal to the other end of the electromagnet. Now let's stop right here and take a look at this really quick. Basically, what we have is positive power running to the coil or the electromagnet at all times. And when we first hook this circuit up, we will have electricity traveling through. It'll be able to travel through the switching part of the relay to the coil and the electromagnet will power up. But when the electromagnet powers up, this switch part here switches and these two terminals become connected while these two become disconnected. So that means power will try to flow, but it won't be able to flow to the electromagnet anymore. That means the electromagnet is going to power off, and the switching state is going to reset, and these two will become connected again. And when that happens, of course, electricity now has a path again to the electromagnet, and it'll turn on again. So it will oscillate, turn on and off very, very rapidly. But this would most likely damage your relay. And we really don't want to do that, and we also don't want a circuit that oscillates back and forth this fast for our purposes. So to slow this oscillating circuit down, we are going to throw in a capacitor and we're going to throw it in on the terminals of the electromagnet here. So we're actually going to hook that up. I'm going to be using an electrolytic capacitor, so we'll draw that schematic symbol in right here. Remember this is the positive side of that capacitor. So what this does is when power begins to run through, it'll also charge up this capacitor. That way, when the switching part switches to not supplying power, the capacitor will actually be able to power on this coil for a short amount of time. And once the capacitor runs out of charge, then it'll flip back to its state and be able to power the electromagnet and charge up the capacitor again. So the capacitor will slow down our oscillation. So that is actually our oscillator right here. Now of course we need to hook this up to something. And to do that we are going to use this other part of the switching part of the relay here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, negative terminal of the battery and I'm just going to loop that around to the common terminal of this switching part. And I'm going to hook up the other terminal down here, and I'll take the positive terminal down here. Now you can hook these two wires up to anything. You can hook up a resistor and an LED to have it blink on and off, or really anything that you just want to turn on and off over and over again. But LEDs are kind of boring at this point in the series, so let's try something new. Let me draw in this schematic symbol right here. And of course, this schematic does have a positive and a negative terminal. Now what in the world can this be? Well, of course, it is a speaker. 
So if we hook up a speaker to this oscillating circuit, it will actually begin to make noise because we will be turning it on and off at a fairly rapid rate. Now it's not going to be any really fancy noise or anything, but hey, it will be some noise. And just so I am able to actually control the noise that comes out of the speaker, I'm going to take part of this wire away right here, and I'm going to add in a switch that we can turn on and off instead. This way we can turn the speaker on and off with the flip of a switch. So real quickly again, we have power always going to the electromagnet and to the positive side of the capacitor. And initially, we will have a path for electricity to travel through the electromagnet and to charge up the capacitor. And once the electromagnet has enough power to turn on, then these switches will turn on to these two terminals here. Electricity will not be able to travel to the electromagnet anymore. However, the capacitor will be able to provide electricity to the electromagnet so that it stays in that position for just a little bit. That way we slow down our oscillation. Once it runs out, however, the electromagnet will turn off again and these two terminals will become connected and electricity has a place to travel again and also recharge the capacitor. So let's go ahead and get to making this oscillating circuit here. Now I will be using a 5 volt power supply for this, so you have to make sure that the speaker that you are using is able to operate under that voltage. Mine is able to, but if you don't have a speaker that can do that, then of course you can just use an LED and a resistor and have that blink instead. And of course my speaker here has a positive and a negative terminal that I'm going to use alligator clips to hook up to eventually. Now I'm going to be using the same relay that I used in the last video here. Of course the far two right pins are for the electromagnet. The right pin and the center pin here are connected together by default and the right and left pin is connected when the electromagnet is running. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in the breadboard here like so. And I'm going to first hook up one terminal of the electromagnet to the positive terminal or the positive power rail of my breadboard. And I'm going to begin by using a 1000 microfarad capacitor. Now I highly recommend that you use the highest value capacitor that you have. This way you're not going to burn out your relay just in case it does happen. And also if you use too small of a value of a capacitor, the speaker might not be audible. And remember that electrolytic capacitors are polarized, so you do have to make sure that you connect the side with the stripe of negative signs to the more negative side of your relay. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Remember the anode is going towards the side that is connected to positive already, and the cathode is going to the other side of the electromagnet of my relay here. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove my relay, so I'm just taking a look at where the pins line up. This way I'm able to build the circuit easier. And I'll start by connecting the electromagnet, the more negative side, on over to the common terminal of my relay. And as you can see, that lines up there. So now I'm going to go ahead and take a wire to the initially connected terminal and hook that up to one side of my switch. And then I'll take the other terminal of the switch and hook that right on up to the negative power rail. So when it's on, it will provide that negative power just like we had in our circuit to the electromagnet. And now I'm going to put the relay back in here. And if we go ahead and push the button, or rather flip your switch to the on position, we should have a working oscillating circuit, which I'm going to do right here. And that sound is actually the electromagnet within the relay moving around. That's the only sound that it's making. Now I'm going to hook up a wire to the positive power rail of the breadboard, and another wire to the opposite side of my relay, the other side of the switches. And I'm actually going to hook these two wires up to my speaker. And I'm also putting another wire here to the common terminal of that switch, going right to the negative power rail of my breadboard. Now I'm going to go ahead and take some alligator clips and hook them up to these two wires here. And when I do that, I'm going to take the more positive side for my speaker and hook that up to this wire here, and the more negative side of my speaker up to this wire here, because the negative will be traveling through the relay like so. So let me go ahead and actually hook these up to the speaker I have. My speaker has the terminals labeled plus and minus, so I'm just going to hook these up. And now what should happen is if I flip on the circuit, we should have a series of audible clicks from the speaker. And as you can hear, that is actually happening, and we can clearly hear that speaker making a bunch of noise here, so that means our circuit is working. Now let's try something a little bit different. I'm going to take this 1000 microfarad capacitor and replace it with a 470 microfarad capacitor. I'm going to hook it up in the exact same way. Now 
I am decreasing the amount of capacitance. So what should happen is my speaker, or rather my oscillating circuit actually, should actually increase its speed and therefore we should have a more speedy audible sound. We're actually going to have a higher frequency. And as you can hear, and as you can hear that frequency is definitely much much faster. So you can experiment around with this, play around with it, have some fun, and I'll see you guys in the next video where we're going to work on integrated circuits and make a much better oscillating circuit that we will actually end up using in our 8-bit computer. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you then.